prayer and Bible study conference call. This is your Friday Night Lights edition, and I am your co-host, Pastor Mark McCoy, along with my co-host, Pastor Paul McCoy. And we are here tonight, ready to uh, release a word. Um, we have some that are on the conference call with us right now, and we're also live. Uh, after we get through with the conference call, I mean, after we get through with the live version on Facebook, um, um, we're going to be on the conference call with a um, um, exchange, what we call overtime, where we fellowship with one another, discuss the word that was preached, and then we also talk about uh, 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 how it helped us. And, and then go into prayer and prophecy as the Lord leads on the conference call. Um, just to let me say this in the beginning, and I'll try to remember to say it at the end, uh, the conference call number is 910-218-0531. Let's go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together once again on the Friday Night Lights program on the Guiding Light International Prayer and Bible Study Conference call. We ask you, dear Heavenly Father, this night that you bless the technology that we're on using Facebook Live and doing conference calls. We ask, dear Heavenly Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over this ministry. We plead the blood of Jesus over this word tonight. We plead the blood of Jesus over everyone that is listening to this word now or listening to the recording later. We plead the blood of Jesus over their life. We plead the blood of Jesus right now, the Heavenly Father, over their situation and their circumstance, over their home, the Lord, over their, 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 their family, the Lord, over their friends, over their neighborhoods, over their co-workers, over their schoolmates. We plead your blood. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for your blood because we know that there's power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Now, Lord, as we get ready to study your word tonight, as we get ready to get into your word, Lord, we just ask you for a special anointing tonight, dear Lord, like never before. Anoint this word, anoint my lips, anoint my thoughts, anoint everything. And then, Lord, those that are listening, anoint them that they might hear your word, dear Lord, that they might receive your word, and that we all might be not just hearers of your word, but doers of your word. We call you now, Lord, and say thank you. Thank you for being true to your promise. That where two or three are gathered in your name, you said that you would be in the midst. We thank you that you're here with us, right beside us, no matter where we are. Have your way, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Tonight we're going to talk about a familiar passage of scripture. Um, if you have your Bibles, go on and turn to the third chapter of John. Gospel of St. John, the third chapter. And, and, and what we're dealing with in this lesson tonight, uh, I know that I cannot do this lesson to its fullest in a, in a 30 minute uh, 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 message, but, but, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let the Lord use me accordingly and, 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 and let the word fall where he wants it to fall. Tonight, tonight, we're going to be talking about moving from a religion to a relationship. Let me say that again. We're going to be talking about moving from a religion to a relationship. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what we're going to talk about, see, because there, there is a need right now, especially in these last days and in these last times, to be careful not to get caught up in a religion, but to be caught in a relationship with the one that can take you up into heaven. Oh, hallelujah. And his name is Jesus. We're not talking about uh, 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 the church. Uh, God's church is his bride. The church is his body. And we who believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we're all part of the body. But we need to understand that, that there are those out there that want us to be more involved with a religion than they want us to be involved with a relationship with our Lord and Savior. And we have to be very, very careful.
people these days about that. But see, because a religion, a religion emphasizes the importance of, of a sacrifice, a devotion, a devotion or rituals and, and, and how much uh, people should do for God. That's that's a religion. That's that's what the emphasis is. But 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 the but the gospel of Jesus Christ is 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 the emphasis is the importance of the sacrifice and work of Jesus Christ. It's all about the person named Jesus. It's about a person. So if it's about a person, that means that it must be personal. And if it's personal, it must be about a relationship. I was telling everyone before we came on the broadcast how wonderful uh, 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 Sister McCoy, she sung a song for us. And, and her song is, 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 is quintessential to this lesson. It says in the song that she sung tonight, oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more can he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Yes, it's all about love. Love is the key to all of this because that's what a relationship is all about. Religion is about rules and not relationships. Oh, and, and don't get me wrong. When I, when I think about why Jesus came and died on Calvary for us. He died because he wanted a relationship. And then I got to tell you, some of y'all ain't going to like this. Satan wants religion. Satan wants religion. See, because he can control religion. He can control people's rules, regulations, and how you do things. That's the kind of stuff he wants to do. And so we must be careful in these last days to not get caught up in religion, but to strengthen our relationship with God. And if you don't have a relationship, you got to, you ought to get a relationship. And so I'm going to go to a text tonight that is so familiar that, that it's going to show us how someone went from being religious to being in a relationship with Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. So turn with me, turn with me now, and, and let's, 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 let's go to, to the familiar passage, and we're going to be looking at John chapter 3. And so let, let me set the stage of this passage of Scripture. This passage of Scripture, the stage is being set. Listen to the text as we set the stage. He says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Amen. So this, 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 this man was a Pharisee. His name was Nicodemus. And if I wanted to put a cute, cute title on this text, I would say Nick coming at night. Nick at night. Yeah, yeah. See, Nicodemus, Nick, Nick was a Pharisee. He, he was part of a, of a highly zealous group of Jewish people who, 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 prided themselves on, on their religious purity and they followed the Mosaic law and its traditions. They, 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 they said, I'm a Pharisee, so, 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 so that meant I was better than everybody else. And see, that's what religion make people do. Think that you're better than everybody else. Ah, oh, man, it just, it just, it drives me wild these days where I see more people following their pastor than they following Jesus. They believe their pastor is all that in a bag of chips. And then don't let them be they made a big building and got a nice sanctuary and all the, the land and everything. Then they start worshiping their building, that church building. But, but that ain't the body of Christ. That's where you fellowship as a believer. Oh, hallelujah. I know I'm preaching now. I got to come down because I want to teach this thing. Now, 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 hear this ruler, this Pharisee. And being that he was a ruler, he was a man with some means and some money. And here he is, coming to see Jesus. Listen to verse 2. 
This man came to Jesus by night. Yeah, he came to see Jesus at night. Now, many people, when they preach about Nicodemus, they, they, get, they get on Nicodemus. Oh, he coming as a secret agent, coming at night. I don't care when you come to Jesus, long as you come to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You need to just come to Jesus. And this man came to Jesus at night. And listen to what he said to him. Listen to what he said to Jesus in verse 2. He says, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher. Come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Oh, hallelujah. Nicodemus gave Jesus some accolades. Oh, rabbi, meaning he's a great, great uh, preacher, great teacher. He's a great, great man of God. And then he said, these teachings that you've been doing, you, you're a master teacher. You, you, it, you, it had to come from God. So he understood the source. Then he says, no one can be doing all of these signs that, that you're doing unless God is with him. So, so, so what, 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 do, what do you have here? You have Nicodemus willing to, 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 to see what Jesus is doing. He saw his works. He heard his words. And because of his works. And because of his word. Nicodemus decided. He wanted to come and find out. Who Jesus was for himself. Now now. I got to tell y'all. Just for a commercial break. That 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 this, this text. The first time I preached. Uh, I preached this text. And I call it inquiry minds want to know. Some 25 years ago. I can remember some 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 40 years ago when I heard this 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 message preached in a little bitty town in Louisiana and when I was attending Grambling State University and this old preacher he preached this text and, and, and at that point after he preached that word it just it, like it just came out of his lips into my heart and it went into me and I at that point I've been saved. I've already given my life to Christ. I've already been baptized. But at that point, I moved from having a, 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 a religious mindset to having a relationship with God. Oh, well, like I said, this this just a commercial break, just to just to break it up. See, see, religion, religion or rule or rules uh, that 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 might cramp your style. But, but when you got a relationship, you, your boundaries uh, are there to keep you safe. Yeah, yeah, you realize that. And religion there's don't do that. But, but in a relationship, you, you move to a point that I, I won't do that because I don't want to hurt the relationship. Oh, if I could spend some time right there. It's many things that we don't do as husbands because we're married to one woman. And many things that we don't do as women because we're married to, to one husband. That's part of relationships. You don't have to have a do it up. You don't want to hurt the relationship. Religion says you, you can't do that, and, 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 but, but, but relationships say I can enjoy the benefits of walking with Christ. Religion says you have to you have to do all of these things. The relationships says I get to do all these things. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Religion, religion says I'm fearful that I'm not measuring up. But a relationship says I enjoy the freedom of being forgiven. Religion, religion teaches us judgment comes when I sin. But a relationship says God mercies covers me when I sin because his love covers a multitude of sin. Let's go on in the text. Verse 3, I'm just setting the stage. I ain't got to my point yet. I'm just setting the stage. <laughs> Jesus answered and said unto him, Most assuredly I say unto you, unless 
one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Wait a minute, Jesus. All that then happened is this man came up and started telling you how great you are, and then all of a sudden you say to him, most assuredly I say unto you, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, 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 let me say this, let me say this, because I'm at a point where I'm getting ready to transition, and I wanted to say some things right here. Now, if you are super spiritual and super religious and all of that, you, you don't really want to hear this message because you, you can't deal with it. But if you are just a simple, simple saint, not, not a super saint, but just a simple saint, you, you, you want to hear this word tonight. Because it's going to be something said in this word by the power of the Holy Spirit that's going to help encourage you and then it's going to help you encourage someone else. So, Jesus says, most assuredly I say unto you, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, I always thought this was interesting because Nic Nicodemus did not ask him any questions. Nicodemus only made a statement. But Jesus went right to the heart of what was going on in this man's life and why he came at midnight, why he came in the middle of the night. You know, most folks say, well, he came in the middle of the night because he didn't want his friends to see him, a Pharisee coming to see this fly-by-night preacher. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Jesus went straight to the heart. In order to understand this, you have to go back and look at verse 24 of chapter 2 of John. And this is what Jesus says there. But Jesus did not commit himself to anyone because he knew all men and had no need that anyone should testify of man for he knew what was in man's heart. He knew what was in man. And so he went straight to the heart of the matter. He knew what was in Nicodemus' heart. What he said to him was, you got to be born again. You need to come into a relationship in order to be part of the kingdom of God. You got to be born again. You got to be born again. You got you to give your life to me. You got to come into this world again. You got to be born again. So, Nicodemus replied, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Nicodemus was thinking on a natural basis. But, but, but what Jesus was saying, that, that, that this, this isn't an external thing, that's the problem with religion. Religion is external. Everybody want to show how much religion they got. It's external. But Jesus was talking about something that is going to go on on the inside of us. A transformation. You know, it's like when the butter, I mean, when the caterpillar, it, it goes into his cocoon and he comes out as a butterfly. We see that external metamorphosis going on. But there's an internal metamorphosis going on. And that's what, what God wants us to grab a hold to. Nicodemus didn't understand it, so Jesus replied in verse 5, Most assuredly I say unto you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Wow. And he goes on and he says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say unto you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Jesus broke this thing down. This is a spiritual matter. This isn't a natural matter. This is a spiritual matter. Everybody must be born again by his spirit. 
You must have the Spirit, the Holy Spirit in you and be born again. Oh, hallelujah. Now, there are many people who, who, who deal with the water and, and, and deal with the uh, Spirit and, and, and they have different translations. Some say, well, the water is, 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 is the physical water. When a person is born into the world through a woman, they come through uh, the, 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 the womb after the water has been broken. So you come in through the water. And then after you've become a man and you're a woman, you become a human, then you got to be born again in the spirit, coming through the spirit. That's one interpretation of it. Another interpretation is, is that the water is the word. The water is the word. And if the water is the word, it has the ability to cleanse you when you hear the word. And, and Jesus himself said that he's the living water. So it's Jesus that's cleansing you. You can look at it from that standpoint that he's the living water. And just like he told the woman at the well, this water I have, if any man drink of it, you'll never thirst again. So we can look at the word, the water, as the word or as Christ. And we know when we say it's the word, that's how John started his whole book. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, and all things were created by him, and not nothing that was ever created came. You know, because he was the word. So the word can be the water. The water can be the word. That's, that's, that's some interpretations of it. But it does not matter which interpretation you grab hold to. The point is still the same. You need the Holy Spirit to move on you, to give you the faith to believe, to look at your heart and make sure that you, what you believe in is real. Hallelujah. So that you can have the relationship. And so family, 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 we go to the not family, but the next part of the lesson, verse 9, Nicodemus asked him, how can these things be? That he had some questions. He wanted to know how can this be? And verses 10 through 15, Jesus answers him and says, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen and you do not receive our witness. If I had told you earthly things, you and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended unto heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the son of man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe in him is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son. And this is the condemnation. That the light has come into the world and man loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For every one practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who comes, to, but he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Oh, hallelujah. Moses lifted up the serpent, told him, y'all sick, if you look at it and believe, you'll be healed. Jesus was lifted up on the cross. If you believe and trust in his death, his burial, and his resurrection, you shall be saved. That's setting the stage 
to move from religion to relationship. Nicodemus came at night, but he came to the light. I'm going to say that again. Nicodemus came at night, but he came to the light. So, there are two primary truths I, I want to get from this text as we get ready to close this message. Number one, being born again is not about human effort. If anyone deserves eternal life, then it would appear that Nicodemus had all the rights and qualifications. But the story reminds us of four simple truths. These are the four simple truths. Our position in life will not save us. Our popularity does not save us. Our prestige does not save us. And our piety does not save us. Human effort, you can't be saved. So what, 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 what can save us? What, what, how can we become saved? We must be born again. Well, what, what, what does it mean to be born again? This is my point number two. Being born again is about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It is not at all about religion. It is about a relationship. It is about being born again from above. It's about the new birth. Yes. A new birth is a spiritual birth. It's not a physical. It's not physical. Being born again means we are born from above. When Jesus says, unless you be born again of the spirit, we cannot see the kingdom of God. The new birth is a sovereign birth. In other words, it's initiated and controlled by God. He compares it to the wind. We can't see it or understand it. It is a God thing. Oh, somebody, if I had somebody to holler, it's a God thing. The new birth is supernatural. The new birth is not science. Not something we can place in a test tube and examine. It is not some secret recipe. It comes through the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So I'm going to end this message with the song that Elder Marshall started with. Elder Marshall sung this song he didn't know. That this was a setup. I don't know about you. But I know I've been changed. I know. I've been changed. The angels in heaven. Hallelujah. Done sign my name. Well. The songwriter says. If you don't believe. That I've been redeemed. <laughs> I don't. The angels in heaven and already signed my name. And back in the day, when I gave my life to Jesus, I stepped in that water. And that water was cold. It chilled my body, but not my soul. Yes, I know I've been changed. Because the angels in heaven have signed my name. I'm in Jesus' love book. I'm in his book called the Lamb Book of Life. And it tells me he loves me. And it tells me he's going to watch over me and keep me. For the rest of my life and into all eternity. Because. He is the lover of my soul. And I love him. I love him. I love him. Oh, 
how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you. Blessings, y'all. Know that you're loved by God. And Jesus proved his love for us when he died on Calvary for you and for me. If you want to have a personal relationship with him, you got to give your life to him. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. Let the Holy Spirit move in your life that you might accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and walk, hallelujah, in the newness of life. Before we leave this broadcast on Facebook and go over into overtime on the conference call, I want to pray the prayer of salvation with you. Dear Heavenly Father, we come right now confessing that we believe in our heart and we are now speaking it with our mouth that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and that you raised him from the dead. Thank you, Lord, for showing us your love by giving us Jesus. Lord Jesus, please forgive us of our sins. Come into our heart and become our Lord and our Savior. Thank you for this relationship. Fill us now with your Holy Spirit that we might increase in our relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer and truly believe it in your heart, you are now saved. We encourage you to find a body of believers that are fellowshipping together that have this same kind of relationship that you can fellowship with and grow in his word. If you want to join us on overtime, we're going to be on the conference call 910-218-0531. Again, 910-218-0531. Facebook, be blessed and always be a blessing.